want to talk about uh, seasons and um, in talking about a season Jesus Christ himself went through seasons and these seasons one of the seasons that we are going to see Jesus Christ going through is in the book of, of, of Matthew and we're going to read from chapter number 16 verse number 13 through to, a, uh, to 28 it's a lengthy uh, uh, portion of scripture but this is uh, what scripture says in the book of Matthew chapter number 16 is the first book in the New Testament uh, this is what it says when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples who do people say that the son of man is well they replied some say John the Baptist some say Elijah and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets then he asked them but who do you say I am Simon Peter answered you are the Messiah the son of the living God verse number 17 Najua ikihang tunasoma Okay. Verse 17 says, Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Verse 20 says, Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. Verse number 22 says, But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Not from God's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it but you give it up if you give up your life for my sake you will save it and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul is anything worth more than your soul for the son of man will come with his angels in the glory of his father and will judge all people according to their deeds verse number 28 says and I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Father, we pray that you would speak to us through this word and through this portion of scripture. That as we get into it, you will speak to each one of us. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we get into what we have read, just a little background or a little context of what um, where that scripture or that portion of scripture uh, is. Uh, Matthew, being a Jew himself, he's writing the account of Jesus. He has worked with Jesus. He records about the birth of Jesus and coming through. And at this point, Jesus is not very, very far from his the end of his work on earth. And so, 
he is seeing a season that is coming to the end of him being on the face of the earth. And so this is what, this is, this is the feeling. And this is what he is trying to look for in the disciples. Now, if, when, when Jesus is asking this question, who do you say I am? He's asking his disciples. He first asks them, who do the people say I am? And he gets all sorts of answers. They say, some say he's a prophet. And others say he's Elijah. And others said many other things. And one of his, and then he asked the questions. And who do you say? Because we have worked with you for the last two years and now going to three years. We have been together. Who do you say I am? And I'm thinking, all the disciples who are there were like, yeah, it's okay to be a prophet, like they say. It's okay to be, we actually don't know whether you're Elijah also, it's, it's only that, yeah. But Peter says, and he gives an answer, that Jesus says, that was not from human knowledge. It was revealed to you by my father by the Spirit. Now, the question that I want us to ask ourselves today, because like the disciples of Jesus, we have walked with Jesus for some time. And when everybody else is saying he's a good teacher, he's a prophet, he's, and everything else you want to add, he's my provider, he's my counselor, and it is true, he's all that. Who do you say he is? And, and, and now that we're talking about Matthew, like I said, Matthew is coming from the Jewish background. Now the Jews, when Jesus came, they were expecting a king. It is little wonder then that when, when Matthew traces the genealogy of Jesus, he goes back to Abraham. He says, son of this, son of this, and finally, son of Abraham. Because he was a Jew. He wanted to be identified. He, there is something that they were looking for. And Jesus has come and he has failed to be that king that they wanted who would fight for them against the communities uh, that were there. And Jesus tells the disciples, because I have worked with you, or rather he asked, because I have worked with you for this time, and maybe, like Matthew is saying, I have not measured up to be the king who would have come and fought against the other communities like you expected. Then who do you say I am? And this, this discussion is very interesting. In, the, in, in this, uh, in this uh, book of Matthew, chapter 16, 17 going forward, we we'll find a lot more time Jesus working with his disciples as opposed to what he was doing previously. In the previous chapters, you will find Jesus going around performing miracles. The same, same people that he is asking are the disciples, who do they say I am? He ministered to them. He performed miracles. He healed. In actual fact, the, 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 the chapter that is just before chapter number 16, he has performed miracles of feeding the 4,000, the 5,000, healing the sick and all those kind of things. And yet the people didn't accept Jesus. He served them. He did good things to them. And Jesus realizes, because I am come as a king, true, he is the king. But he was not that kind of a king who was coming to do what they expected. He was coming as a king, representing the kingdom of God in every aspect and he wants to tell them I have walked with you and I am the king and I hope you know it so the question that uh, Jesus asks he says Jesus answered and said 
um, where was that? But verse number 15. He said unto them, but who say ye that I am? And then Simon Peter answered um, and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and Peter got it right, right there. Now Peter, and, and Jesus tells us, this was revealed to him. And after that, Jesus says, you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will establish my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now, in the original, uh, the, the, the name Peter means rock. But Peter here is a small rock. And Jesus say, says, you are Peter, the rock, a small one. But upon this rock, upon this revelation, upon this knowledge, which is of God, I will establish my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now, thereafter he says, and because of that then, I have given you the keys to the kingdom. He says, because of this revelation, then you have the keys to the kingdom. And he says, a very powerful um, statement, that whatever you shall forbid, whatever you shall bind, with this revelation, whatever you shall bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. You know, I see Jesus, like we're saying, he's coming to the end of his season, and he's saying, now that you know that I am of God, that I am the king, I am giving you the keys to the kingdom. Now I know you can handle. Everybody else who said that Jesus was a prophet, Jesus was Elijah, they missed it. Jesus was not Elijah. He could have brought prophecies, but he was not just a prophet. The difference between every other prophet, every other teacher, every other leader, and Jesus is the fact that Jesus came, represented the kingdom of God, 100%. He died like it was prophesied. He rose again and he promised to come back. All those other leaders that you're going to find of different faiths and denominations and whatever else you want to call it, none of them promised to come back. It is only Jesus who promises to come back. And because of that, he says, now that you understand who I am, I can give you the keys. And when we get the keys, it is not just for us to feel good. It is not just for us to be saying, we have the keys to bind and to lose. You know, some of us, when you meet people who are, and I think this is our, our spiritual pride, Say, I can bind you. I have the power. I have the keys. So don't joke around with me. That time maybe, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Please pay debts that you're here. Don't tisha tisha people that you're going to bind them. You will bind, you will lose when you are in the understanding and the revelation that God has given you. That is when it's going to work. You will claim when you are in the revelation and it's going to work. But you will not claim people's things. Say, now you, we have been given the power. <laughs> I, I remember there was a time we were coming from a place that people, when people used to claim, eh? I claim it. <laughs> I don't know where, <laughs> whether you can remember those days. Well, it's still there. It doesn't work that way. It is when you are in the understanding of the revelation uh, who Christ is. And so Jesus sees his season on earth coming to the end and he knows that this work has to continue. And so from this moment on, if you read the, the, the scriptures in the book of Matthew going forward, 
Jesus will spend a lot more time with the disciples, empowering them, discipling them, telling them that you are agents of the kingdom. So that as an agent of the kingdom, you will go to places and you will know you are representing the kingdom. The agents will be coming here on Tuesday because they will be representing their people. They will be standing there. They will be speaking. They will be saying what the candidate would have said had they been there. And Jesus tells the disciples, you need to style up. Now that you have the keys, represent the kingdom. And in representing the kingdom, we are saying that whatever will be or is supposed to be done in heaven, you shall do here. Whatever you saw me do, you shall do to the people around you. That is the kingdom. The kingdom is not for cowards. The kingdom that Jesus brings to us and through the scriptures here in the book of Matthew, it is not for cowards. It's not for people who are going to say, well, I feel like because you are my friend. No, you are representing a kingdom. If something is happening and it is wrong, the kingdom has principles. It says, this is wrong. And so, if there are things that you and I, as agents of this kingdom, are involved in, and scriptures are clearly saying, this is a no-go zone, the truth is, it does not matter how much we discuss those things. We are out of order. If the scriptures say, you shall not, your view is not required. And we see these kind of views. Peter, the one who has been revealed to a couple of verses later and Jesus is continuing to say my season is coming to an end my season is coming to an end and he says I must go I am going to suffer I am going to die Peter says please you cannot you are our master you are our leader how are you going to die same same Jesus who congratulates Peter tells Peter get behind me you Satan. Why? It's because at this time he goofed, he missed it. Jesus had to die. He knew his season was coming to an end. And anybody who was going to stand in the way, Jesus was not going to take that. And so he tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. Well, he might not have been Satan, but the spirit that was operating at that moment. And you know, that tells me that as, as men and women who God has appointed, has picked on to use from time to time, we are human beings and we are subject to failure. And so it is upon us to keep connected in the place of are we, are we getting the connection? Because if we don't, we are the same, same people who got it right, but it is possible for us to get it wrong. And Peter becomes an example of humanity and the limitation thereof. Very, very fast. Uh, I want to look at a few things that we need to understand about uh, changing seasons. When you're thinking about seasons and Jesus becomes an example, he tells us through his life that seasons are inevitable. They are going to come. Like it or not, change is going to come. It is inevitable. Seasons will change. Whether we like it or not, we cannot stop change. We cannot stop seasons. In actual fact, God has ordained it to be that way, that we will have seasons. Right now, we are going through a season um, in our country. We are going through winter. Is, it, is this winter for us? <laughs> so that we sound like we, we are also, yeah, we can tell the difference between seasons. We are in winter. It's going to come to an end. That's a place to say amen. <laughs> It is a season. It is not here to stay. 
it is coming to an end. And the same happens to the seasons that we find ourselves in. God has ordained it to be that way. Seasons are going to come and they are going to go. Now, Miles Monroe says that when change comes, we don't fight with change. Don't fight with change. Manage the change. If you don't manage it, it will manage you. He says, we cannot pray against change. And if you want to think, if you, if, if you want to know that change is happening, this is how change happens. When I came to this church as a young man, the whole of my head had all the hairs. Change has happened. Change has come. There is a season that has gone, and we are in another season. And I know also for you. <laughs> Some of our sisters, the makeup you use today is a little bit more than you used to use a few years ago. Why? You want to, to yeah, eradicate a few things here and there. Change has come. A season has gone. And you're in another season. I don't know for the people who drive. You know, when people are young, <laughs> you disregard time. You are in Nakuru at 2 in the, in the morning and you're going to come to Nairobi. <laughs> True or false? But when you get to a certain age, say, ma hikifika saine. Ama nikiasha tumata. The next place I'm looking for is a place to sleep. Change. A season is gone. And we need to manage. So that it is wise for you. If, if you used to be the person who traverses the whole country, two in the morning, <laughs> you manage that change by allowing yourself to get a place, sleep, wake up in the morning when you're strong and normal and sober, then drive. You will get home. It is you that has changed. Today, there are young people who will set from Nairobi at 9, at 10, and they are going to Kisumu. Others are doing it. It is their season. How about some of us who, yeah, you like exercising and you visit the gyms one in, once in a while. Sometimes you feel like you don't, you know it profits you, but you don't want to go there because you lack the energy and the sight. There was a day Nobody will tell you, please go. You just found yourself. Change. Please. It is inevitable. Change is happening. And it is inevitable. Jesus is going to die. We cannot stop. And we should actually look at the season that we are going to enter after Jesus dies. Because it is good for us. So every change that comes, we need to allow it to come. Don't bind change. It is not bindable. Change is going to happen. We just read from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, that there is a season and a time for every purpose in heaven. And so, change is inevitable. Change is inevitable. Seasons will come and go. Number two about um, understanding about changing seasons is that all seasons are created by God. There is no season that comes away that is, that is made of man. Even when you find yourself in a situation, that season, God knew it. He, he allowed it. And, and uh, I'm reading a, big, a book by Bishop Kefa Omai. Uh, he, he talks ab about understanding seasons of change. And he says, in uh, one of the, the things that he talks about change, he says that all seasons are created by God and they communicate the necessity to slow down in our lives, sometimes to just stop and think. And as you do that, then we give room to the Holy Spirit to speak what needs to happen in the season that you find yourself in. 
Psalm chapter number 31, if you'd give us. This is what scripture says. Psalm 31. Psalm 31, verse number 14. It says, but I'm trusting you, O Lord, saying, you are my God. Verse 15. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Whatever happens, you need to be comfortable enough knowing that you are in the hands of God. Your future is in the hands of God. Your tomorrow is in the hands of God. So, you need to slow down. Some of us need to slow down. Some of us need to stop and think. And as we do that, we allow the Spirit of God to speak to us. And when the Spirit of God speaks, we become like Peter who gets to know that Jesus is the king. When we do not allow the Spirit of God to speak to us, then we, we become like Peter seasons too. And finally, I say this, that seasons may mean different things for different people. A change in season will mean different things from different people. We could be in the same season in terms of a political season, um, in terms of the weather that we're going through, but that might not mean the same for all of us. In actual fact, being in the same political season doesn't mean that we are going to experience it the same, all of us. Some of us will be on the side that will not have uh, one on Tuesday, same political season. Some of us will be on the side that will have one. Now, so whether we win or lose, we're in the same season, but it's different for now, some of the seasons that we go through could be seasons of, for example, when you retire from your job. When you retire from your job, you get into a new season, and that requires you to look at things differently. I know there are people who are known. There are people who have worked for long until they are known by the work that they do. Have you had, uh, I think it doesn't happen a lot here. It happens a lot in the village. Well, I'm a village boy. Have you had something like that? Anajulikana na kazi ambayo alikuwa anafanya. Eh? Mama Maina yule mwalimu. Because she worked through. She has served and now a time has come and she's going to retire. Some of our seasons would mean retiring from those jobs. And this is the only thing that you have known what to do. So what are you going to do? And in that situation, you want to ask yourself, who is Jesus to me in this situation? Some of our um, uh, situations that are changing, uh, for example, if you're looking for a job, somebody who is looking for a job, you have, you, have, you have done all that is required, you have the qualifications and the papers, but you have not landed a job for as long as you know. And then you're meeting somebody else who is retiring. Two different people. The one who is retiring tells you as a young person, Kazi utapata. Utaifanya mpaka uchoke. The young person says, How? When? Let it come. Mimi sita choka. True. You will get tired. You will work until you get tired. Because work is there. So you could be in a season. You're looking for a job. And in this season when you're looking for a job, you want to ask yourself, Who is Jesus to me? So that you're also not found doing all sorts of things because you are in a season of looking for a job. And some of us could be in a season where we have a newborn. Those that have newborns, by the way, the seasons of newborns is a nice season. You sleep during the day, you are awake at night. You know those seasons of tiptoeing in the house? <laughs> It's a season. Now, those of us who have gone through that, now you think you, you, you cannot relate. You have forgotten. <laughs> <Pastor>. <laughs> you're in that season. Tiptoe. 
it is the season of tiptoe. Please tiptoe until you are done with the season. If you don't, uh, you will have trouble. How about having a new location? Like we have, we have the same congregation, but different locations. We are in a season, by the way. We need to look out for what is it in this season that we can take advantage of. And like we just said, there is more space for us to serve. There is more room for you to invite somebody. One of the things that was said about the, the martisites. Now, martisites means we have a site here and a site there. Well, it's not a new thing that I'm introducing. I'm saying two locations means we have a location here at DCIKZ and we have another one at yeah, Shiro. Yes. You qualify. So that means what we have been preaching, we can now preach it here and it is the same being preached there. One of the things that was said about the multisites is that we can be able to saturate our area with sound doctrine. And so when seasons like this come, we take the opportunity that God has given us. And this is how we manage uh, the seasons. Embrace the new, the new that has come because with it there is growth, with it there is space for service, with it there is a lot more that is coming. How about somebody who is getting married? Because a season change could be somebody is getting married. You have been trusting God for marriage. And finally it happens. When you get married, one of the things that happens in houses where people are married is that they cook. I know that is a foreign concept for our young people and especially the ladies. You cook. Or shall I say, we cook. But we cook together for the first few <laughs> months. We are in the kitchen, we are doing things together. And as we continue, the man starts retreating. You will find yourself cooking alone. Now that season requires you to measure up. Don't say, we, we, can we now order? Can we now... Truth be told, I have walked along this street, and this is a small street in Zimmerman. But as you come into Zimmerman, if you haven't observed, be very careful. Observe. After you get uh, from Cooperative Bank, kuna kibanda inakuanga hapa ya viazi na metura na nini na nini. Look at the people who are standing there. They are young people. And sadly to say, they are ladies, most of them. There is a day I passed there and I was like, we are done. Ladies. Sasa hakikula hapo. Ananda kupika. And then they get into this season. We've been praying and trusting God. Tunashikana mikono. Bring somebody around. And then somebody comes. When they come, you're going to cook. You're not going to stand there and buy and eat meturas as you go home. So it is a season. And you need to manage it. Some of us, it could be a season of surviving some loss or tragedy or an accident. You used to do things for yourself and you go through this season and you can no longer do that for yourself. And some of us are to be wheeled for the rest of their lives. It is a season that requires you to know that seasons are in the hands of God. And in that season, that you have found yourself in, it might not be very palatable, but the truth is, God knew it. And in that season, you need to ask God, who are you to me in this season? Because you need to be awake uh, to, that, to that fact. And there are many things that we could say bring about change in seasons. Time will not allow to get into that. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 tells us that I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans of good and not of disaster or not of evil. He says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Verse number 12 says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. 
Verse 13, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will uh, be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and, and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home uh, again to your own land. This is God speaking to the, the, the children of Israel as they are going to captivity. And he says he's the one who sent them. And he says, when you go there, I will be with you. That scripture says, I have, I have a good plan for you. Yet they are going into captivity. They are going to be captives. And God says, I have a good plan for you. What season are you in? What season do you find yourself in? Jesus gets to know that his season is coming to an end. And he has to prepare to exit this space. And he does that in a way that causes the work that he had started to continue on and on over centuries until today we receive the same same kingdom that he came to represent what season are you in what adjustments do you need to make do you understand the season that you are in who is god to you in this season is it clear to you because that needs to be clear and as long as we have opened that space for god to speak to us we will get it the moment we lock him out and we start doing our own things human intelligence human knowledge will not take us there and so you could be here and you're saying yes i'm in a season i realize that i'm in a season and i'm struggling with this season and some of us is because we have refused to accept change we need to manage that change that has come are you here and you're even saying i have not even understood who this jesus is and you're seated amongst us this morning I want to ask, you will never understand the seasons until you allow yourself first to belong to that team, to that group of people that Jesus sits with and teaches them. And by doing that, you enroll into God's kingdom and come into the place where you are taught of God. Are you there? You have not given your life to Jesus. And you're here this morning and you're saying, I am in a season I cannot understand. We need to start from that place where you give your life to Jesus and we rest assured that the seasons of our lives, he's going to take care of us. He's going to lead us through. If you haven't given your life to Jesus and you're here this morning, I want to invite you to do that. If you lift up your hand, we'll see it and we'll pray together. Or you're saying, I'm in a season, I realize I have been fighting. I have been fighting with this season. I have refused. I'm in denial in actual fact. I am in denial that this actually happened. Seasons are God's seasons. Don't fight with the season. Allow the God of the season to come into your life and do whatever he needs to do. Make things right for you. So I want to ask if you need prayer in any area and you're here this morning, whatever season you could be going through, as a ministry team comes, and we allow the worship team to come back here, give us a song. We want to do ministry to somebody who came today and you're saying, I'm in a season. You do not understand what is happening. And a season could be anything that is happening in your life and is causing you to feel like God has left you. God is not concerned. Please, if you make uh, uh, your way to the front here, there's somebody who is willing to pray with you very very fast and then we will be bringing this to a close whatever season it is you could be even through a season you could be going through a season and you're, you're wondering what happened god has forgotten me you are in luck and it is so so evident that even the, the the children are telling you what are we going to do what is happening are we going to go to school some of the evidence could be somebody has locked your house and you are looking out to god you do not know what to do Please, let's come and pray and agree and trust that God is going to see us through this season. Let us not fight with the season. Let us petition God on the season that we are in. And if you have nothing that you want to present to God, I think it would be a moment, a good moment for us just to go before the Lord. As change is going to come, is inevitable at some point, it is going to come so that when it comes, you know how to go about it. Some of the seasons that we are in, for some of us, it could be you are in a relationship that is not right. And you have struggled with it. This morning, 
God is making a way for us. 